Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica and our continuing series, The Unported Playlist. Today we're taking a look at Sega's 1996 Model 3 Racer, Scud Race, which has to be the best arcade game Sega ever made that they refused to port to any of their systems. They even showed this off as a Dreamcast tech demo in 98 before the system came out, but in Sega's infinite 90s wisdom they just decided that this was a game we didn't need to be able to play at home. Which to me makes no sense because this is an incredible game. And no knock against the Dreamcast, that had an amazing library, everything Sega put out was very good. But why they wouldn't give this to us, especially at launch considering they made it in 96, still makes no sense to me. They could have had this day one with Sonic Adventure and with Virtual Fighter 3 and it would have been a great extra game for us to have and I think it would have sold a ton of copies. As far as playing this is concerned, I am not using an original board like anything on this playlist. It is all emulation and I am using the Supermodel emulator on a Windows 10 machine with an NVIDIA 1080 graphics card and an Intel i7-4790K processor. And it runs perfectly at full speed. I hooked up an Xbox One controller with a wireless adapter and minus the fact that I'm not the greatest at the game and I am hitting the wall, it's extremely easy to set up, to run, to control. It really just feels like Sega releases for the PC. That's how easy it is to emulate it. As far as the gameplay is concerned, it is an incredibly fast paced, really easy to handle racer, and graphically it looks amazing. I mean, even today, this looks great. Now granted, it is emulated and there are some things going on in the background that make it look a little bit better on a modern PC, but in 96, when I did play this game and I played it once at my local arcade, it looked amazing. Considering we were still in like PlayStation 1 level graphics, even with the Nintendo 64 looking a little bit better than that level, that this was something we could play in 96 just seemed like an unachievable goal in the home. But then of course the Dreamcast did come back around in 98, 99 and showed that we could have this level of graphics in our living room even if the monitor wasn't as nice and even if we didn't get to sit in a big driving seat with pedals and a wheel right in front of us. Do I recommend you download and play this game? Absolutely. Especially because this is the only way you can actually play it because like the playlist says, none of these games were ever ported. Now it's not the most fully featured game, there aren't a ton of tracks, so your mileage is going to vary depending on how much you like racing games, because you're not going to be able to sit down and play this for hours. It's definitely an arcade game, so it doesn't have any extra tracks or any other features that your normal console game would have, so it's definitely going to be a limited experience. Could you emulate this with a friend, you know, have two instances of a PC or a virtual machine and network across them? You can, because you can get into the network settings and play around with that, but it's definitely going to be more easy to just have a one-player experience. And you will see that I didn't make the finish line in this one, and that is something that I do have issues with in this game, is just the difficulty is a little bit steep. And I just can't seem to finish a race. Now, I'm not the best at racing games. I love playing them, but by no means am I an expert at them. It is not the genre in which I am good at. Fighting games are definitely more at my speed. But it still feels fair enough that if I actually practiced a ton outside of capturing, I think I could get pretty good at the game. I do like that it has a little bit of that Daytona feel where you get that rolling start. And now just moving into the cockpit here and getting the front of camera view. It feels like it moves so fast. It's almost, to me, difficult to control in that scenario because I feel like I'm just going at 300 miles an hour. But the feeling of speed in this game is huge. It's running at a lock 60 frames a second, even via emulation. And it just feels so fluid and so nice to look at that it's definitely like the bar that all other racing games should aim to hit. You can spin out there. There really isn't too much of a downside to that other than you hit the wall and you lose a little bit. But it's definitely an arcade racer where hitting the wall, it's not going to be a real crash. You can definitely recover from it. And you do get a little bit of that damage on the front. The hood is deforming. So there are some real-time effects where those polygons can warp to show damage. It's not full real-time damage, but it does give you enough visual flair to kind of enjoy what's going on. And as you can see in the first-person view, as I go underneath these airport terminals and this little indoor area with the scaffolding, everything is just flying by at a crazy clip. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop talking because I want you guys to hear the soundtrack because it is quite good. But I will come back in just a bit and we'll talk a little bit more about Scud Race.
and I got another game over. I want to get better at this game, I definitely feel like I can, but as far as capturing was concerned, it was just a little bit difficult for me to actually do a decent job. But now here we are onto the next stage, and this definitely has a Sonic Adventure feel to me when you get to those Mayan temples in the end of the game. I definitely feel like Sega must have taken some inspiration from Scud Race, even if it was subconscious, to actually get to where we are here, because it definitely has that same sort of feel to it. And this is a game that I wish Sega had just been smart and ported over because there were some decent racing games on the Dreamcast. Don't get me wrong, Sega Rally 2 is awesome, but I don't know why they wouldn't have brought this out. I mean, they literally could have had this as a day one release for the Dreamcast. They would have had a bigger library, and I think everyone would have really loved this because even today, it's an amazing racing game. Like, I would rather play this than a lot of the racing games that come out now that are arcadey feeling because this has that classic nostalgic Sega driving experience down to a T. You know, if I did just slam into the wall there, and that's kind of part of the experience too. And it's definitely a game that I recommend everyone go out and check out. Like I said, it would seem to be that something like the Model 3 would be difficult to emulate, but honestly, even on a mid-tier system, you're going to have a really good experience with this. This was the easiest emulator I had to set up across the entire playlist. I literally got all the files in place, and I can't tell you where I got all of them. I installed it. I put a graphical user interface in front of Supermodel so I didn't have to use the command line. I set the controls for X input and I double clicked on the name of the game. It popped up and it played immediately. All the controls were perfectly mapped. I didn't even have to worry about getting the controls set up. The analog input was great. The triggers were great. I really didn't have to do anything other than download a few files, install them, and play. And as far as emulators are concerned, they've definitely gotten a lot better from years past is how easy they are to pick up and play, but I would say that I was shocked at just how easy Supermodel was to use for Model 3 emulation. Definitely easier than Model 2 emulation, definitely easier than Sega Naomi emulation. It was shockingly easy. Now we're just going to move on to the expert stage, which is kind of just a mashup of everything, it seems like. There's some elements from each course that you can use. I definitely use that automatic versus the manual, and I do that with all arcade racing games. You know, it might not be the way to play, but for me, not having to worry about shifting is something that I definitely do enjoy. But really, that is Scud Race. I consider it to be Sega's best 3D arcade game that never got ported to homes. I mean, you may have a different opinion than I do, but honestly, that's just how I feel because I think it's just an absolutely perfect arcade racing game. It boggles my mind how this didn't get ported the same way the Revenge of Death Adder didn't get ported to the Saturn, a system that would have perfectly handled it. I mean, they made sure that we got a copy of Daytona USA on the Saturn, even if it wasn't great because it was their marquee arcade game. But yet, for some reason, Scud Race was just left in the arcades and... I don't know, maybe it didn't do well in arcades, maybe it wasn't popular. I wouldn't imagine that would be the case, because it was definitely in a lot of arcades in the U.S. I remember playing it at the Dream Machine, my local arcade, growing up in Vermont. But maybe it just didn't do well, and Sega thought, hey, let's try something different. But we got a port of Virtual Fighter 3, so they were definitely trying to port arcade games over to the Dreamcast, and they did that pretty much the entire life of the system. But when I came up with this playlist, 10 games from the arcades that weren't ported, Scud Race was the first game that I put on that list, and I definitely do not regret that decision whatsoever. And just going to the pit here, it's kind of got a little interesting thing, just like Daytona, where you do get a pit scene, and I did go in. You do lose a little bit of control of the car when you hit the wall too many times, but honestly, you can still perform pretty well. It's not a simulator, so it's an arcade game. You definitely can beat the crap out of your car, and you're still going to be able to race pretty much top tier level. But I hope you guys have been enjoying this series so far. It's been a lot of fun talking about unported arcade games, especially something like Scud Race that just has such a great visual feel to it, an immense sense of speed, amazing controls, great soundtrack, really just the total package. It was one of those games when I played it in arcades, I absolutely loved it, and then it just disappeared one day and I never got to play it again up until the point of emulating it a couple years ago and then again for this video series. But we really hope you enjoy it. Definitely recommend you go out and take a look at it. It is one of Sega's best games of all time. Short of that, we'll be back on Tuesday with our episode in our mainline series, and we'll be back on Friday with a video as well. Hopefully you didn't hear anything in the background of this capture because we are still under lockdown for the COVID-19 virus, so I hope you and your family is safe, and by the time you listen to this, everything is on the clear and we're back to normal life. But thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great rest of your week, and we'll see you next time. I lost again. Bye-bye.